Elden Ring. Now I offered a brief glimpse into what I thought about this game in my quick review, which I did about a week or so ago, but it is now time to take a deeper dive into From Software's latest game. So this is my full review of Elden Ring. But before we get into it, I want you to do one thing please, and that is hit that subscribe button, you maidenless tarnished. Elden Ring's basic gameplay loop and controls are basically the same as every other From Software game in the Soulsborne series. You go around killing enemies to gain points, in this case runes, and level up until you feel like you are ready to take on one of the game's many bosses. Sounds simple, but as we all know, this is easier said than done. Elden Ring continues From's tradition of having a very harsh difficulty curve. Personally, I can tell you how hard it is compared to the other games, and since I've played most of From's other games, I feel like I already have a base skill set to take on these games, and I think you will find this game much harder, obviously, if this is your first time playing a From Software game, as opposed to, say, if you're playing your sick From Software game. The combat skews a bit closer to Dark Souls, as opposed to the fast kinetic pace of Bloodborne or the stealth of Sekiro, but elements like stealth and being more aggressive in combat are definitely present in this game. I am not a big fan of parrying in these games, so I have two swords and play it a bit like Bloodborne. So it caters to all styles of Souls players, magic wielders, heavy weapon experts, long range weapon users, it's all catered for. This is all a case of if it ain't broken, don't fix it on the part of From Software. Why mess with the perfect formula? So now onto what is new in Elden Ring. And the big, big new thing is of course the open world. While you've been able to explore in most of From's games before, you are always funneled down one path with a few detours and hidden areas to explore. Elden Ring has a fully realized open world which you can explore at your own pace. It definitely has a breath of the wild feel about it, in the sense that there's so much hidden stuff to find and as soon as you enter the world you can do what you want. Now there are areas that obviously have higher level enemies which you should avoid at first, but you could go to these places and get destroyed if you really want to. The From formula in an open world setting is absolutely perfect and actually makes for a more forgiving and slightly easier game. If you were stuck at a boss in a Souls game before, you sort of have to tough through it and grind it out until you are able to kill it. It can get tedious and maybe put people off, but in Elden Ring you can just go and explore another area if you get stuck, find some hidden caves and bosses and level up that way so it always feels like you're moving forward and always feels like less of a grind. I would like to add that the map is massive too, but it feels so full and the way it reveals itself is amazing. It looks small to start off with, but as you find more of the map, it just grows and grows. This is even without talking about the subterranean levels. Another new feature is also your horse, which allows you to explore this open world at a greater pace than just running through it. It would take a long time to run through this world. This horse can also do a double jump, which is quite cool. The horse can also be used as a combat option. It's quite hit and miss, but fun nonetheless. Like most From Software games, the story, where there is one, on the surface is basic, but if you want to delve deeper, then it is full of rich lore, characters and story. The basic outline is you are searching for the pieces of the Elden Ring, and to do so you have to beat bosses that hold each of the pieces of the Elden Ring. But the characters and bosses also have a rich story, and if you want to look into it, then you can. It would be way too much to go into it properly on this video. The ins and outs of the story, that is just another video for another day. The locations and worlds in Elden Ring which are also just so beautiful in a classic way and also in a desolate way, all have their own stories and lore to them also. I will say though that Elden Ring is probably the closest from have ever come to doing a more traditional story as there's probably more cutscenes in this game than all the others combined, maybe besides Sekiro. Now circling back to bosses, I've said this many times before, but with From Software, you come and stay for the bosses and Elden Ring does not disappoint. There's 12 main bosses that you need to be to finish a game, but it appears that there is over 
50 bosses in this game. Probably even more than that. And although there's a few reskins, they are all awesome and present their own challenge. Except for the fire giant. The fire giant is not awesome. You've got big beasts that fill your entire screen. You've got sorcerers. You've got knights. Weird foul creatures and just about everything in between. And as I said, they all present their own unique challenge. But a fair challenge. Except for the fire giant. Some of the bosses are definitely top tier from software bosses. And would appear near the top of anyone's tier rankings for bosses. Elden Ring is probably as close as you will get to the perfect From Software game. I don't envy them trying to top this masterpiece. It excels in all the areas that you would want from a From Software game. Great bosses, tons and tons of lore, locations with tons of character, better customization than the previous games, and obviously that classic From Software, one more go, one more go style of gameplay. There's only a couple of flaws to this game, and one of them is frame rate issues. They should have definitely locked it at 30 frames per second and not tried to push for 60 frames per second, as it is really noticeable at times. And maybe, maybe a tiny flaw in this is the front formula is maybe getting a tiny bit repetitive. I just want to throw it out there, I don't necessarily think that's the case, but I know some people might feel that's the case. Before I give this game a rating, I just want to share some personal thoughts on Elden Ring. In a day and age where you have half-baked, half-finished, cash-grab games like Battlefield 2042, the GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition, and the initial release of Cyberpunk 2077, it is so refreshing to see a company and a game that feels like so much love and care has been put into it. This game sales has proved that gamers want a challenge. Single-based story games, not to be insulted by half-baked rubbish and have dumbed down messes shoved down their throats. We don't want microtransactions or anything like that. We just want some good old-fashioned 